So my friend just helped me pick up this Vitra cork stool. It's a piece that I've been wanting for a while, but if you've seen these before, I think these are $715 directly from Vitra. So definitely a very pricey piece that I was certainly not willing to pay the original price for. I was lucky enough to scoop this up from someone on Facebook Marketplace locally for $200, which for a stool is honestly still on the very expensive side, but I feel like compared to $715, I'm definitely happy with the price I paid. So as you can see here, it is entirely made of cork. Honestly, it kind of looks like <laughs> the top of a wine bottle and you can sort of see the fading Vitra stamp on the bottom to let you know it's an authentic product. And honestly, I wasn't really sure how it would feel, but holding it right now, it's actually pretty weighty. I'm definitely happy like that. I feel like when it comes to designer furniture, yes, it is very expensive, but they're also usually very high quality. I really love picking up stuff like this that has a lot of interesting texture to it. If you can see really closely, has a lot of sort of like nooks and crannies in it and it's very sort of dynamic. I feel like since my apartment isn't the most colorful apartment in the world, I definitely really like getting stuff like this that adds a little bit more character through texture. I will say though that like most other Facebook marketplace purchases, I honestly didn't really think too hard about what exactly I would do with this. It was sort of one of those things where because it was just a good deal and it's a piece that I've been interested in a while, I just scooped it up without having a second thought. But now it is time to figure out what to do with it. So let's see what we can do. I think option number one would be to use it sort of as a little side table right here. So then I can use it to pick my feet up or honestly even just use it to place like little knickknacks and stuff on top of. Actually, maybe I will put this little portable lamp that I have. I feel like that looks pretty good. So this is option number one. Option number two would be to replace this Herman Miller table that I have right here. I feel like this is kind of a love it or hate it thing. It's really low to the floor and I've definitely got a few comments of people who are not the biggest fans of this. So let's see what this cork stool looks like next to the Togo instead. Maybe place this lamp on top of here. This is also not bad, but I do feel like this isn't the most convenient, especially with this lamp on top of it, just because you don't really end up with a lot of space here to actually like put things. So not my favorite one, but this is option number two. Option number three is basically just to have it Okay, probably not put it there, but free floating around the living room. I feel like a lot of the pictures that I've seen on like Vitra's website or Design Within Reach's website, they'll have like one or two of these kind of just wherever in the living room so that when you have guests over, you can kind of just pop a squat. I feel like that would work better though if I had more than one of these because I think by itself, it's a little bit awkward to just have it, I don't know, chilling in the living room. Option number three, I guess. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Fourth option, another cool way I've seen people use stools like this is actually as a plant pedestal, a very pricey and expensive plant pedestal, but let's give that a shot right here and see what that looks like. So maybe just move this plant down here like that. 
I actually like this as an option a lot because this is pretty low to the floor and natural sort of woody grainy texture to it. I feel like it looks really nice with a plant on top. But let me know what you guys think of the four options that I showed in which you prefer because I'm definitely really curious to hear all of your thoughts. While I'm at it, I wanted to quickly talk about stools or just like little side tables like this in general. If you've noticed, I have a lot of them around my apartment. These are stackable stools from Artec. That is a Herman Miller Eames low wire table. I think it's what it's called. This one I just talked about is the Vitra cork stool. This is a pedestal from Lynn Rose. And then this is a solid wooden stool from Room and Board. I really love multifunctional furniture like this because they can be used as stools for extra seating space. They can be used as side tables to hold little stuff on. They can obviously just be used as decor accent pieces. And overall, I feel like are just a super versatile piece of furniture to have. I definitely encourage everyone to purchase multifunctional furniture like this because no matter how well you plan out your space, you never really know what exactly you're gonna switch around. And so having furniture like this that is stackable, that's modular, or that has multiple units uses is a really great use of your money because it'll really evolve with you as your space changes and grows. So recently my apartment started trending on Twitter and I'll insert a quick screenshot right here. A lot of people are basically clowning me saying, oh, you have such huge windows. What's the point if you're just gonna face a brick wall? Honestly, I don't blame them. I feel like usually when you think of windows, you obviously think of having some sort of view. I want to take a little bit of time today and kind of explain why I've actually fallen in love with facing this brick wall over the course of the last year and a half and honestly why I actually prefer it. The first thing I'll talk about, as you can see right here, all of the amazing natural light that I get. Pretty much throughout the entire day, I get a really good amount of natural light. And I feel like if you're familiar with just general concepts of interior design, or I guess, honestly, I feel like most people just get this. Natural light is super important for any space. It makes it feel a lot more lively. It obviously is really important for all my plants and just makes you feel really warm and cozy. And so I do understand the whole thing of having a view and all that. But for me, at least, I think having natural light is the most important part of having a window. And I definitely do get that with this. It's not super intuitive how I would get so much natural light throughout the year. So let me explain that real quick. Essentially, the brick wall across from me is another building, which is actually a good distance away. I want to say it's maybe 50-ish feet away. So it's not like my building is literally facing a brick wall like five feet away. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but because it's far away enough and the top of that building isn't actually too high, there's a good amount of natural light that's able to seep in throughout the entire day and brightens up the entire space. The second big thing I'll talk about is privacy. I feel like privacy has been important for me always, but especially since I've started doing content creation, I obviously get a lot of people asking where I live, and I've even heard a few horror stories of other content creators who have showed off kind of like their view, and people have very quickly been able to figure out where they live in the city. That's something I definitely wanted to avoid. You pretty much can't tell where I live at all. And on top of that, it's just really nice to feel so free in my space. I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of clips of me being shirtless or whatever throughout my entire apartment. And for me, I feel like having that freedom and having that level of privacy has been a huge bonus for me over the course of the last year and a half. And it's something that I think is pretty hard to get in a city like San Francisco. I think the only other scenario that I can think of in which you'd get basically total privacy is if you are really high off the floor, like for example, in a high rise building in which you're able to have a view, but at the same time have a lot of privacy. So I guess that's kind of like a win-win, but obviously with a style of apartment like this, which is a loft where you have like really tall ceilings and really high windows, <laughs> there's pretty much no buildings that exist that you can be a high off the floor and 
and at the same time have that style of apartment. And so I feel like this is pretty much the best situation that we could get. And one quick note on that privacy point. I know a lot of you guys have also seen that there are actually windows in the building across from me, which may make you think that people could see into my apartment from that. But I'm actually not even sure that that building is residential building number one. And number two, I've been assured by my landlord and building management that those windows, as you can see, are totally blurred or tinted out. And so the windows are definitely not a problem. The last thing I'll talk about is just the overall aesthetic that it has. I feel like even though when I first moved in, I definitely wish I had a view. I've actually really fallen in love with just how the brick wall makes the entire space feel honestly and look. Having brick wall outside my window is basically the next best thing I could get to having exposed brick. And I think gives a really unique vibe to the entire apartment that you don't typically see with apartments in San Francisco. I feel like usually when you do see brick accent walls, it's usually in apartments in New York or other East Coast cities where brick is a much more common building material paired with sort of the choices that I've made in terms of designing the interior. I feel like it really stands out as its own sort of unique feature to the entire apartment and honestly something that I've come to really love over time. And then one quick little bonus thing I'll talk about is also saving on rent. I feel like realistically, if an apartment like this had a view of the city, it would at least be a few hundred dollars more per month. And I've mentioned before, but me and my roommate together pay $4,400 per month. And this is a pretty big apartment. It's 1400 square feet in a city like San Francisco. I feel like we're getting a pretty great deal. So yeah, it kind of goes without saying that there's also just the little monetary benefit of saving a little bit of money on rent every month. So that's kind of my whole little yap session about the brick wall and just my two cents on why I actually like it. No hate or disrespect to anyone who feels like claustrophobic or doesn't like it at all because I totally get that and I feel like it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Surprisingly, I actually haven't had many negative comments about it on YouTube specifically. I feel like most of the comments have been on platforms like Twitter or Instagram or TikTok. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments of the brick wall and whether you guys would prefer a view or just in general if you like it or not. I'm super curious to hear all of your thoughts. Because the reason I'm drawn to this is because I used to have a really stressful full-time job. So I worked in consulting and so I was working like 50 to 60 hours a week and every time I got home I always wanted to come home to a space that made me feel like very like zen and cozy and comfortable. I think that is the feeling that I always want to evoke in all of the spaces that I'm working with because I think home should be somewhere where you feel at peace and like you feel totally comfortable with what's around you and the people that you're spending time with. While I do want to keep it neutral, I also want to avoid what people call like the sad beige aesthetic in which like everything is just white or everything is just tan. Let's try to add a little bit of dynamic into it, but I also don't want anything to like stand out too much. 